The Second World War quickly influenced ladies' fashion in the 1940s. Clothes rationing began two years after the war started. So women were encouraged to make do and mend and sew their own clothes from paper patterns. Good quality undergarments were the basis of any outfit and they helped create an hourglass silhouette. A garter belt or girdle was worn over the knickers to hold up the stockings and help smooth over the hips and stomach. Nylon stockings were nude in colour and fully fashioned, meaning they had a reinforced heel and had a knitted seam along the back. The stockings were then attached to suspender clips to hold them up. And pantyhose as we know them today were not invented until 1959. Stockings had to be perfectly adjusted to ensure the seam was straight before putting on your dress and heading out for the day. As the demand for nylon increased during the war, as it was used to create parachute, tents and aeroplane cords, nylon stockings were taken off the market. So women were forced to get creative and painted seams on the back of their legs, along with self-tanning solutions to give the appearance that they were wearing hosiery. Bras were lightly cone-shaped, but not quite so pointy as a bullet bras of the 1950s. A full or half slip was worn over the underwear to create a smooth shape beneath the dress or skirt. Dresses and skirts during the 40s became shorter due to rationing on fabric during the war. In previous decades, dress length usually extended down to mid-calf. Women's clothing had a more masculine silhouette, with shoulder pads in most garments to create a square neckline reminiscent of military uniforms. Dresses were commonly made from rayon or cotton and often were adorned with cheerful and colourful patterns, which was a contrast to the wartime they were living in. Dresses and skirts were typically A-line, meaning they flared out gradually from the hip to the knee, and pleats weren't used until the late 40s as it was considered wasting fabric. The hair was carefully pink curled and brushed out into gentle curls. Hair was longer in the 40s, coming to about shoulder length. Even though there were fabric shortages and difficult times during the war, women did not let that affect their hairstyles. Women styled their hair in many ways, victory rolls, bumper bangs, glamorous coiffures and pompadours. Hats were still a popular accessory with the most common hat being the beret, followed by the turban and the fedora. Hair flowers were very popular and were often handmade of rayon or silk. Red lipstick was worn by every woman with many shades to choose from. Deep red, raspberry red, and light shades of red, to name a few. The popular lipstick shape was with the top slightly overdrawn, which created a glamorous full lip. During the 40s, beauty was not left behind or forgotten. Instead, beauty was your duty and was an act of patriotism by taking pride in your appearance and wearing a bright red lipstick, which symbolized victory optimism and helped boost morale. Heels were often called pumps and were shorter and thicker in the early 1940s, compared to the thinner styles by the late 40s. The peep toe was a common shoe style, with a small opening at the front of the toe. Bags were much larger and practical than the previous decade's small clutches. Day bags were large enough to fit a lady's ever-growing collection of beauty products. The masculine silhouette of the 1940s dominated women's fashion for almost the entire decade. And despite wartime clothing and fabric shortages, women managed to make do and mend and look effortlessly glamorous.